What is your signature lip lift shape and how, et cetera? It's different. Everyone's different. Um, I mean, uh, yesterday, so this week we've done seven lip lifts. Every one of those lip lifts was different. And so it depends on whether I have the young girl from Miami who's got millions of followers on Instagram and is trying to do this on the low and versus someone who's coming from LA who wants to be exaggerated and, and overblown, really exaggerate those really pretty proportions that they've worked on so hard to, to achieve. Someone from Chicago or New York where subtle and they want you know nobody to notice. They just want to look a little bit refreshed to my you know patients who are in their 60s who are slightly aging face so i vary what i do everything from how much roll they get how much pout they get how much volume we achieve how much tooth show they get um slight changes in the angles that we pick up so i think that the probably the the characteristic of what i do and why people like it is that it's very bespoke and so um, it's very much particular to them and one of the things that I tell everybody when they come in is bring me pictures you know bring me pictures and that way it doesn't matter if you're you know a tiny little Cuban girl from Miami and you're bringing me pictures of a six foot tall Nigerian supermodel and a five foot tall beautiful Asian girl and you know whatever may be it doesn't matter because my job is to find what's common amongst all those lips because there's a reason why your brain is thinking I like that shape and I like how that looks and oftentimes they're very different all of them and what we need to find is the one characteristic within all those lips that you like that then we can either mimic in your lips or we can get you something close and that's where the bespoke aspect of it is and so it's not very cookie cutter and that's probably the hardest thing when i have other docs come in and a big part of it is i'm telling them so this is where it gets a little jazzy and you kind of have to go by feel a little bit and oftentimes you know i just kind of look at the, the patient and they tell me and i'm like listen i think this is going to look pretty or this is not and, you know a couple of days ago i had a patient that showed me some pictures where things were really rolled out and I was telling her I was like okay this looks really good and I see the common thread I was like but I'm just gonna throw this out there you have really pretty proportions I think you would look better instead of doing this we do this and create a pout with a little flare roll on the side because it's gonna fit your look and so then I looked up a couple pictures showed her and I was like what do you think of this and she said yeah that looks really pretty can I pull that off I'm like absolutely so you know, there is a little bit of that going on, but you know, my cheesy line to all the patients is, listen, if we were shopping for sunglasses and I pick out a couple pairs of sunglasses, put them on your face, tell them that you look amazing on them, it doesn't matter what I think, you gotta look in the mirror and you gotta like the way that pair of sunglasses looks on you. So, you know, that bespoke aspect of what I do is I think the thing that's hardest to teach and it's also probably the most important part of it because the one thing that that people comment when they come and they see, you know, they come from Australia, they come from Europe, they come from the Middle East, they come from down the street, is uh, all your stuff looks supernatural and it looks like it fits their face. And so if I was doing cookie cutter, same thing for everybody, some people would look good, others wouldn't, but that's what differentiates it.